testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We're back with quick hits. A little bit of a hardcore topic today. Um, it's a busy, crazy fight week. Uh, major cards all over the place. Um, the most overlooked fight of the week. We have Brian Castano versus Patrick Tessera uh, for the WBO 154-pound strap. Uh, and this is a great fight. It's an all-offensive slug fest. I mean, this is can't-miss action. Um, I'm picking Brian Castano to win. Um, and again, we're doing two shows a day, two shows a day. I'm going to be back with my, uh, host, uh, uh, MCR podcast in just a little bit, uh, four central time, um, five on the East and two in the West. Um, so check that out, but we're doing two shows a day, two shows a day. Today's show, Brian Castano, why Brian Castano is criminally underrated. Um, he should win um, in, in, in a fun fight, but he should break down uh, and take uh, Patrick Tessera's belt, uh, his WBO belt, um, this weekend. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this fight. Like I said, it's an all-action, high-offense fight. Um, I'm going to get into why Castano is, like I said, criminally underrated and why he may be the best or one of the top two or three 154-pounders in the entire world. All right. Uh, first thing you guys want to know is that Brian is not a box. He's not just a slugger. He had a, a deep amateur career. He beat Earl Spence in the amateurs. He beat uh, Derevinchenko in the World Series of Boxing. He just had a deep amateur pedigree. He can box. Okay. Um, he's a short, compact, come forward fighter. Um, he's got a really good, snappy jab. Okay. He doesn't always use it, though. Um, he uses it when things are going his way. He's kind of a momentum fighter, right? Meaning when things are going good, things are going really good. Uh, but you saw it, 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 it in the Laura fight when he struggled, he was just kind of pouring it out there kind of sloppy. But in like the Amatosa fight, uh, when things were really, really going his way and he was looking unbeatable, that is a shotgun jab that he uses to shed, set everything else up. I um, mean, he needs to use it that way against Teixeira and against the rest of the top guys at 154. He throws great combinations. Offensively, this guy's as good as it gets. He throws great combinations. He has a tremendous Miguel Cotto type left hook to the body. Um, it, his physical power and strength is, is, is awesome, right? Like he's really, really. There's not much you can criticize offensively when he's snapping off his jab. He's that good. I think he's the best offensive fighter in the weight class. Okay. Here's what. Here, here's the downside. He's very high level basic. Right, it's right hand jab, jab, right hand, left hook, left hook to the body. There's not, there's not much else to it. Now he's so good at that, he might be able to break everyone down. He's so good at it. He's so powerful. He's so strong. He's such a good craftsman at what he does that it may be enough to beat everyone in the weight class, but it may not be. Also, um, he had a draw with Laura. I think he's improved since then. I think his jab is better. His his, his defense is what it is. He's got some head movement. He, he, he can slip his head off center line. Good enough, but his offense is, you know, his defense is his offense, right? His defense is breaking you down, making you shell up and firing off power shots and having you, you know, shell up, keep your hands in the pocket and pockets and not return fire. Um, he's not a defensive wizard by any means. His style reminds me a little bit of Omar Figueroa, um, the, the elder Figueroa brother, um, like with a little more power. Um, this guy's got snap in both hands. He's got snap in both his punches. He's a really, really tremendous offensive fighter. Um, he, he mixes up head shots to the head, shots to the body tremendously well. Um, the problem here, there's all, look, the problem here is that Patrick DeSero is a good offensive fighter too. We saw it in the Adonis fight. Patrick DeSero is an excellent offensive fighter. Um, but he's, Casano, given his style, given he's not a defensive wizard, right? Like he he's no Pernell Whitaker out there to say the least. Um, obviously, his problem is going to be eating too many shots. And Tashara's got problems, so Tashara's got a puncher's chance. Tashara 
could win this fight. It's just there's so many more paths to victory, and Castano is so much more skilled and fine-tuned. Castano should win this fight, and I think he wins by stoppage late. Um, like I said, he's got boxing skills. He's beaten Spence. He's beaten Derevchenko in the amateurs. He's fought Laura to a draw. He can do a lot of things. He's not a, a, a – although he looks – like a one-dimensional fighter, a come-forward pressure fighter. There's a lot to it, right? <clears throat> and not too many pressure fighters <clears throat> have the type of one-punch power he has, right? Like, we're going to do a video on Josh Warrington soon. Josh Warrington is a pressure fighter, volume puncher. He's got no pop. The only one that comes to mind that has that kind of pop, and probably his pop isn't as good as Brandon Figueroa. This guy is special. Castano is, is a special offensive fighter. He's already 31 years old, I think. So he's in his peak. He's not getting better. This is the best version of Castano we're going to see. Um, but, I, you know, it's going to be enough. I, I would bet the ranch that it's, it's enough to beat Tashara. Is it enough to beat the other guys in the divisions, the Charlos, the J-Rocks, the Tony Harrisons? Maybe yes, maybe no, but he's in that conversation. That's, what, that, that's the purpose of today's video is to say he's in that conversation. He's amongst the one or two or three best 154 pounders in the world. I, I think the world's going to get a good taste of that um, this, this week. This is on the Jojo Diaz card. I don't know why this isn't the main event. This is a tremendous fight. I hope everyone watches. I know it's a busy, busy weekend of boxing. I hope everyone watches this fight uh, on the zone. Tremendous fight. And if you haven't watched Cassandra, go watch the Laura fight. Go watch the Amatosa fight. Offensively, this guy is the goods. He's a powerhouse offensively. Um, his jab is improved defensively. He's not like, he's not terrible. He's not Antonio Margarito defensively. He's not a punching bag. He moves his head. He slips it side to side a little bit, but again, his defense is his offense. His defense is, is slowing you down and hurting you and making you shell up. Um, again, we're going to do two shows a day, two shows a day, every day. That's the kind of content that you like. Uh, make sure to subscribe, uh, share on all forms of social media. Please like, and subscribe, share with a friend uh, from Texas. To the world. Oh, before we go, it is February 8th, 2021. Ivan Calderon is still not in the Boxing Hall of Fame. That needs to change immediately. We need to get Ivan Calderon into the Boxing Hall of Fame. Um, it is high time for him to be in. Um, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.